Namaste everyone and welcome to the Anchor Light Meditation. So here you are for part two of uh, Monday's uh, Anchor Light Meditation. I hope you were able to study, watch the morning one on how to let go of the past. And you know, oftentimes we have difficulties uh, that we go through in life or challenges and we have a tendency to be stuck with them. So the ability to move on is actually one of the secrets of being happy. So in this second session, we'll do a short talk on stillness, and that will help you realize that stillness actually is the door, the key to that door, to be able to experience that peace, love, joy, and happiness, regardless of what's happening in our lives at, that, at this moment or what just has just happened. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, Personally, to my teacher, Master Chok Hok Sui, Mahagu Jumeiling, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing, healing energy. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, so thank you again for joining. Uh, I hope that um, you know these sessions have been helpful. I know a lot of you have mentioned that uh, you know, you're going through challenging times in your life. And <clears throat> we just want to you know, let you know that whatever you're going through, as they say, this too shall pass. And a big part of that is really understanding that in the grand scheme of things, time is continuously flowing. It's like a river, right? It's continuously flowing. And whatever you think is very difficult, if you don't put your attention in it, it flows. <laughs> it's just like you're in a river. As long as you're holding on to something, that is going to be in front of you. If the river continues to flow, and it does, and you just simply let go of this, it's now in the past. So it's what you focus on. And if you focus on whatever it is that's bothering you, what's stimulating you, going, making you go crazy, you're just feeding it energy. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't take care of stuff. You do. But if there's nothing else you can do about it, your emotions and thoughts actually feed it energy which in your perception is actually making things worse. So that's where meditation comes in. That's why we kind of title this meditation and stillness. So if you look at the image that we usually use, we use a lotus flower. And normally the lotus flower is in the lake, you know, water is moving. In this case, we chose one where the lake, at least the, wherever it is, the water is very, very still. You know, there's a saying in India, when the water is still, you can see all the way to the bottom. When the water is turbulent, Oh, it's muddy, you can't see anything. Muddy's been kicked up all over the place. And so that's where meditation really comes in. Again, let's go back to what we always shared. Meditation is not something for you to use to fix something. It is a way of life. Okay? Now, before we get there, let's just give it some context. <clears throat> you know, according to the Lord Buddha, the Four Noble Truths, you've studied it, I'm sure a lot of you have. But the ones who haven't, the Buddha said, there's suffering in life. Doesn't mean that all life is suffering. You know, that's one of the things we all oh, life is suffering. Well, if that's the case, you're completely screwed. No point talking about <laughs> noble tooth number, noble tooth, noble truth number two, three, four, and five. Oh no, two, three, and four. So there is suffering in life. What are the causes or origins of that suffering? The suffering can end. And the last one is how to end it. Essentially, to oversimplify, to make it in everyday terms, suffering is like an ailment. So that's noble truth number one. Noble truth number two, what are the causes of the origins of this ailment? It's just like you go to a doctor, you know, you have this particular ailment, they're going to say, hey, what caused this? Because by knowing what caused it, you'd be able to come up with a solution or the medicine. Make sense? And noble truth number three, this ailment can be cured. And number four, what's the medicine? Which is actually the Eightfold Path. I want to focus on the third noble truth, which is this suffering can end and will end. However, by just reading it on the surface or studying on the surface, it does not say how long before that suffering ends. And that's what I want to focus on today is to really, if it's related to the earlier lesson, a lot of us are suffering unnecessarily. You say, well, what do you mean? Why is it necessary? Well, at a certain point, suffering, it's not really it's necessary. It's happening because the cause is there. But 
I'm looking at a lot of us because of our, I just use the word, ignorance, we have a tendency to hold on to something which is extending our suffering. Okay? And a big part of that is our perception of what's going on. And the example my teacher always uses, somebody insulted you. Somebody said something nasty to you. So choice one, you get pissed off, you're angry. This afternoon, you talk to someone, yeah, you know, this guy did something, said something, he's such a jerk. Three days later, you're talking to someone, yeah, you know, three days ago, somebody was talking to me, he was really nasty, and you just keep rehashing it. Two weeks later, same thing, you're still, you know, writing emails, oh, I can't believe the other day, or two weeks ago, somebody did this to me. I know people don't do this, but some people do, though. It's been three, four months. Yeah, that guy insulted me. I'll never forgive him. I'll always hold on to that anger because that guy's such a jerk. So that's choice one. Or let's just say scenario one. Scenario two. Same thing happened. You were shocked like this guy was nasty. Oh man, I can't believe how stuff he says. Then when you're not in front of him anymore, you go, well, you know. Anyway, maybe the reason he was nasty, he was having a bad day. Maybe... His body's sick. So because of that, I happen to be the first person that he emotionally unloaded on. It's possible. Uh, it's possible that maybe he had a fight with his wife, so he's just like ready to explode, and I was just wrong guy in wrong <laughs> wrong place. Or maybe he's just psychologically imbalanced. Maybe there's a brain imbalance. Maybe he's psychologically sick. Or maybe there's a lesson I need to learn from this that he just happened to be the instrument of karma to make me understand it. Or maybe this is just a test for me to see if I've mastered the virtue of <laughs> loving kindness and non-injury. Or he was just <laughs> in not the right state of mind, so he exploded on me. Regardless, instead of letting it ruin my day or control my thoughts, my emotions, and my actions, I just give him the benefit of the doubt, forgive him, cut the energy connection, move on with my life. So let's say I did that in an hour, an hour's time. So when it happened, in one hour's time, I said, I went through this process, maybe this, maybe that. So anyway, ah, may he be blessed, forgive him. <laughs> okay, move on. So that means in that one hour's time, maybe this, there was some suffering, but the act of observing it already weakens that suffering. After that, I've decided to forgive, let go, and move on, the suffering ended. And move on with my life. Well, in the first scenario, it extended a day, two weeks, three months, who knows how long. Make sense? So the same situation, how much a person suffers is dependent on our response to it. So when the Buddha said, suffering can end, how long before that suffering ends, it depends on what the soul does. And that's the part we have a choice on. Now, where does meditation fit in? If you do your meditation on a regular basis, that meditation helps you realize you are the soul, the spiritual self, that has control over your thoughts, your emotions, and your body. So that means whatever that person said or did to you, you're able to step back and observe, huh, oh, they did this, they did that. Okay, what is the appropriate thing? I can choose to be angry. I can choose to slap them. <laughs> I can choose to do all these things. Or I can choose to back off and give them the benefit of the doubt. Or I can choose not to be affected by it. I can choose to move on. Without meditation, that's almost impossible because you're swimming in the mud. That's how you use the lotus flower as an example. The lotus flower goes through the mud. Through is the key. You go through life, but you choose not to be part of the mud. And you do that when you do your meditation and spiritual practice. Again, you're not trying to meditate when you're in trouble. You do your meditation before you get in trouble. So you do that, get in trouble. So even the stuff is happening, you get to step back. Observe, 
and choose. That's that. Simple. By the way, you didn't hear me talk about religion, did you? Because some of you, well, no, let me put it this way. There are thousands of you watching. You belong to many different, uh, different faiths, different religions. Some of you don't believe in any. Doesn't matter. You know why? Regardless of your religion, your belief system, you are a spiritual self having this earthly journey. That's it. So welcome. So tonight, we'll do our meditation. We'll do meditation twin hearts. But we'll go really, really deep, as deep as we can, in stillness. Because in, only in that stillness do you get to know who you really are. Without stillness, eh, everything's superficial. And the interesting part is there are different levels of stillness. Just when you think it's so still, in one of your meditations you go even deeper and deeper. Okay? So that's that. Hope this is a catalyst for you. Okay? Sit comfortably. <clears throat> All right. Let's always ask for blessings to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Twakok Sui Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you all for divine light, divine love. Thank you for compassionate, purifying light. Thank you for soothing, healing energy. Thank you for divine oneness. Thank you for inner peace and spiritual illumination. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, ready? Take your left hand. Gently tap the center of your chest. Take your right hand. Tap your crown. Okay, close your eyes. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still. At least try to. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Be aware of your crown. Top of your head. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. And exhale. So your heart is your human heart. Your crown is your spiritual heart. So we'll do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grand Master Swahok Sui. So put your hand like this. Oh yeah, open your eyes. Might be a good idea for now. <laughs> so at least you see what we're doing. I know a lot of you are new. So put your hand like this. All right, now close your eyes. Put your gentle attention, attention in your crown and silently repeat after me. I am that I am. I'm not the body, I'm not the emotion, not the thoughts. I am the soul that utilizes the body, the emotions, and thoughts. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. A being of pure energy and light. Just be still. I am connected in one to my higher soul, my higher self. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There's only oneness. And just let your awareness just drift above your head. Your attention, your awareness is just drifting above your head like a balloon. To say, I am that. A spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. That I am. I am that being of radiant light. That spiritual being of radiant light am I. Just be still. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Open your hands in blessing. You say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Now imagine the earth in front of you the size of a little ball. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. 
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, a channel of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Just be still, be aware of your heart in your hands, and just fill the earth with peace and with love. Bless your family with peace and love. The people you work with, fill your city, state, country, fill the earth with beautiful pink light. May all be blessed with peace and with love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. There's people, you know, going through challenging times in their life with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. But there's darkness. Let me sow light. Where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Just be aware of your heart and just flood the earth with peace, with love, with the spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. Just let your heart bloom with so much love. Just let it flow through you. May all be blessed with peace, with love, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. Bless the people who have been kind to you with peace, with love, with joy. May all be blessed, so be it. Now be aware of your heart, take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown, exhale. And just be still. Be aware of your crown, just your crown. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. You might have a sensation of tingling pressure on your head. That's just your crown being filled with so much golden light. I just let that golden light from your crown flow down through your hands and bless the people you love. Your relatives, friends, people you work with. Let that golden light just keep filling up the entire earth in front of you. And just say our souls are one, our spirits are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Just be still and let the golden light just keep pouring through you. May all be blessed. So be it. Now be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. Exhale and pour even more golden light, like rivers of golden light, just pouring out of our hands and flooding our homes, our cities, countries, the entire world with beautiful, intense golden light. You and I are just a pipeline. Just let it flow through us. May all be blessed. Just be still. Just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Just be still. Just be still. 
from the center of the heart of God, through my spirit and through my soul and through my entire being. May every person, every being on earth, in every dimension, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, and in every direction, may all beings in every dimension and every direction be blessed with unconditional love and kindness. May all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing, and for so many right now, emotional, mental, and physical healing, and even financial healing. Just flood the earth with intense golden light. May all beings that are material and non-material be filled with divine light, divine love, and kindness. So be it. May all be blessed. Just be still. The stillness allows the blessings to intensify as it flows through us. May all be blessed. Bless your country. So many countries right now are going through challenges, pain, difficulties. May all of them be soothed of their pain, sorrow, and suffering. May the people of Ukraine be blessed. May the people of Colombia, Venezuela be blessed. May the people of Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan be blessed. May the people of the United States, Canada, Mexico be blessed. May the entire Middle East be blessed. May all the people in Africa be blessed. The whole of Europe be blessed. May the whole of Asia be blessed. North, Central, South America be blessed. From the center of the heart of God, may every person, every being be blessed with peace, with love, with kindness, with inner healing. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. May all be blessed. So be it. Now just be still and let the blessings flow through us. Blessings be to all. Now gently lower your hands. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just floating a few inches above your head, imagine a beautiful golden star. Its shimmering light is radiating light everywhere. Be aware of the love within your heart. Send a stream of love from your heart up, up to the center of your head, to your crown, past your crown, and into that beautiful golden star. Ah. And stay there. You're not the body. You're the soul. You're not any of your emotions. You are the soul. You're not any of your thoughts. You are the soul. You are a being of divine intelligence, love, and power. You are a being of pure energy and light. Silently look at that light and say, I am that. I am that being of radiant light. That I am. Just be still. Look at that light. I am that. That am I. I am that. That am I. I am that. That. Am I? Be still. And listen. Om. Allow your awareness.
Let's just drift into that space before the next ohm. Tension drifting deeper and deeper into that space of nothingness. Be still. Oh. still, be aware of that inner stillness, be aware of the inner peace, be aware of the divine bliss, and just simply let go and let things be now any sound any noise you hear will just help you drift deeper and deeper into that pure nothingness which is pure light now let go Maintain your stillness will intensify the energy, will take you higher, just be receptive. Deeper into the light. Deeper into the light. You are that light. Let go.
gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly, come back to your body. Just gently move your hands, your fingers, your toes, that allows you to just gently slide back into your body. Now raise your hands again like you did before. Visualize the people you love in front of you. Fill them with beautiful golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. Fill the people you love with beautiful golden light. Now, be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Just project golden light downwards to the earth. Fill the earth below you with golden light. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. And so it is. All right, let's give thanks. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, we thank you. To my teacher, Master Chakok Sui, Mahaguj Meling, thank you. In full faith, so it is. All right. Some of you probably didn't want to come back. So we went, uh, yeah, push it a little bit deeper into the stillness. And uh, some of you might be wondering, well, what did you mean by taking you higher? Well, let's just say we gave some uh, special sauce. You know, like you go to a, like you have a row, you have a restaurant, uh, like a suite with many Chinese restaurants. You go, how could they have business? Well, each one have their special sauce. We just give you a little, a little bit of special sauce, so they're like booster rockets to take you higher. Tell me, well, yeah, they want to come back. Well, that's the idea. We want to be able to uh, give you an experience. Because the more you experience this stillness in your life, the more it becomes the norm in your life. You go, what does that mean? You see, when you are able to experience stillness during meditation, you go, yeah, it was weird. It's like I'm floating in outer space. It's very quiet and still, and yet I'm still aware of almost like 360 degrees everywhere. Exactly. Now, listen carefully. Here's the secret. Okay, keep your eyes open. You're listening to me right now, right? Now, with your eyes open, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, go back to that sensation of stillness you experienced, what? About four minutes ago. Go back to it. Just recall what you felt, what was going on in your consciousness. Now, stay there. Keep your eyes open. You see, you're able to experience that same stillness even when you're consciously interacting with your environment. That's the secret. And the good news is, you don't have to climb the Himalayas to get there. You know why people go on pilgrimages? It's very simple. Because as they go to these long pilgrimages, they are the soul is training the body. Oh man, it's hard work. I have to climb this. I have to go through certain conditions. I have to fly. I have to walk. I have to get on horses, whatever it is. But you know, that objective is very, very important. So you go through it. You know what it does? It is basically in the background. The soul is controlling the body. Okay, it's not comfortable. You push through it. Emotionally, oh man, it's so frustrating. Come on, let's do it. It's worth it. Your mind's going over there. I'd rather be at home. The, mind, the, the soul says, no, focus. So you finally get there. Ah, it's a special spiritual place. No doubt there's energy there. But what you don't realize, it is the journey getting there that is the soul controlling the body, the emotions, and thoughts. That's what it's for. Make sense? So what if you're able to 
make the body, the emotions, and thoughts do your bidding right where you are every day. Wouldn't that be great? That's it. It's very simple. And how much did I charge you for this? Nothing. <laughs> All you're going to do is practice. Now, you'll notice at this time, assuming that uh, you went through the entire meditation, it's very still, very still, very quiet. Now, imagine that every day you approach life this way. People start screaming, oh my God, this is happening, this is happening. You're able to stay in that space and observe them. Hmm, okay, I see what you're going through. Okay, okay, I see what's going on. All right, what be the appropriate thing to do? You won't be able to get there if you're swimming in the mud. So every time you do your meditation, you're like the lotus flower rising out of the mud, experiencing the light. Bing, you get to see the mud and you get to observe it. You say, I'm not swimming in that crap. That's it. So do your meditation every day. All right, I think you get the point. So just as a quick announcement, um, on Wednesday, I'll be traveling to Florida for uh, Unleash the Power Within. And I'm very, very grateful to be, you know, part of it. So Sunday will be facilitating the meditation again, Meditation Twin Hearts with um, a dear, dear soul, Sage Robbins, of course, as most of you have experienced already. And so we look forward to seeing you know, all of you who are going to be there. And on Wednesday night, California time, no, oops, Wednesday night, ah, Florida time, 8, 8 p.m., which is 5, 8, 5 p.m. California time, we'll be doing the full moon meditation. I hope you'll join me. I have a special guest. I know you'll love this person. Um, that person will blow your heart open. The embodiment of love. All right. We will see you Wednesday evening, at least in, in the U.S. All right. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Be always happy and joyful. And whatever is happening in the world, you're the soul, the spiritual self. And just be happy. That's it. I must say, take care. Bye. Okay, let me just turn this off. I think.